on ITVX. Russia launches a huge wave of missile strikes across Ukraine. Five hours of air raids force millions to flee for underground shelters to international condemnation. Russia is breaking international law in what it's doing, not only with its invasion, but also with the targeting it's carrying out. And there will be a response from uh, the rest of the world to that type of behaviour. Also ahead, Britain's newest union boss warns the government he won't back down over strike action. Merseyside police make a third arrest over the Christmas Eve murder of Ellie Edwards. And a New Year's Eve warning after nearly 5,000 reports of needle and drink spiking in a year. This is ITV News with Lucrezia Millerini. Good evening. Russia fired nearly 70 missiles at Ukraine today in the biggest wave of strikes in weeks. The targets were once again power stations and other infrastructure critical to survival during freezing winter weather there. Well, the capital, Kyiv, was hit along with several other cities, including Lviv in the west and Kharkiv in the east. At least six people were killed, but that number could rise as more reports come in. Martha Fairley has the latest. It is a sound now all too familiar in Ukraine's capital, Kyiv. From seven this morning, explosions could be heard across the city. A massive barrage of Russian missiles aimed at the country's power networks in a war of attrition. The attack, which lasted five hours, driving people underground to find safety. Anastasia, a medic on call, was forced to take shelter in a metro station, but is growing weary of the constant attacks. We are just tired of this, she said. Yes, we are trying to react and go to the shelter, but this interrupts our life. We don't know how long the war will last. It's hard to be afraid every day and put your life on hold. Other cities also came under fire. Above Lviv, near the Polish border, there were smoke trails from missile attacks that have left 90% of the city without electricity. I think it's important to note that the targeting of civilian national infrastructure and indeed civilian areas is against Geneva Conventions. Russia is breaking international law in what it's doing, not only with its invasion, but also with the targeting it's carrying out. And there will be a response from uh, the rest of the world to that type of behaviour. Ukrainian officials claim 69 missiles were fired by Russia and 54 of them intercepted by air defence systems. On the outskirts of Kyiv, emergency services worked to clear the rubble after several homes and a medical facility were damaged or destroyed in what is the tenth such large-scale attack by Russia on Ukraine. Martha Fairley, ITV News. Here, the incoming boss of the TUC, the umbrella group for unions, has been setting out his position over this winter's wave of strikes. Paul Novak has warned the government can't wish away the ongoing pay disputes. He spoke to our political correspondent, Tom Sheldrick. And Tom, what is Mr Novak hoping to achieve? Lucrezia, he wants significant pay rises for workers, particularly in the public sector, who are facing the rising cost of living. Uh, he's a new face at the top of the TUC, but he's not stepping back from that aim, the approach that's already seen six months of major industrial action. Indeed, Paul Novak told me today that it makes sense to consider more coordinated walkouts across different trade unions and uh, sectors in the new year. And he's also accused the government of sabotaging hopes of resolving these disputes by not coming to the negotiating table. Well, I think it's the government that needs to take a different approach. Unions are being very clear from the outset of these disputes. They're prepared to sit down and negotiate pay with ministers Doesn't and with public sector employees. Well, there can't be movements unless there are talks. And the government has refused to engage in meaningful pay talks with our unions. I don't know how they think they can resolve a pay dispute without having talks. 
Well, ministers don't want to open themselves up to a series of different negotiations. And the Defence Secretary, Ben Wallace, uh, said today that the government is not going to be held to ransom and there is no magic wand to come up with the money that the country doesn't have. So both sides are still talking pretty tough. Today's strikes have again included border force staff and planned walkouts in January by NHS and rail workers and others are due to cause more disruption. Yeah, Tom, thank you. Ministers have suggested the government's decision not to screen passengers arriving from China for COVID could change. They confirmed today the policy is under review. It follows a surge of the virus in China. Well, several countries, including Italy and the US, now require Chinese arrivals to be tested. And four more deaths have been confirmed from strep A infections in England and Wales. At least 30 children across the UK have died this winter after contracting the bacterial infection. Merseyside police have arrested a third person in connection with the murder of a woman who was shot at a pub on Christmas Eve. Stacey Foster is at the scene in Wallasey on the Will Peninsula. And Stacey, what's the latest on the investigation? Well, a 31-year-old from Tranmere has been arrested on suspicion of conspiracy to commit murder. But what is unusual in this case is that Merseyside Police have released drone images tonight of an arrest in this case. It's dated last night at 11.33 and it shows officers approaching a property from the front and the back and then someone is led away. Detectives have also been given more time to question two other people arrested on Boxing Day. Ellie Edwards was on a night out on Christmas Eve when she was shot dead at this pub that remains closed tonight. Police are still searching for the weapon, the gun and a vehicle involved. But releasing this footage tonight sends out a clear message that they won't stop until they find those responsible. All right, Stacey Foster, thank you. There's also been a third arrest in connection with a Boxing Day murder in Birmingham. Footballer Cody Fisher was stabbed to death outside a nightclub. Police arrested the new suspect early this morning in London. Finally, police are increasing patrols in bars and clubs ahead of New Year's Eve after receiving nearly 5,000 reports of suspected spiking in the past year. They say it's a difficult crime to investigate because any drugs pass through the system quickly. Well, Leila Hayes has been speaking to a woman who believes it happened to her. I remember waking up in A&E and having four drips attached to me and actually a doctor trying to fit something else into my body. Sharon Gafka is convinced her drink was spiked on a night out with friends. The former Love Island contestant says she never reported it to police because she thought she would be blamed. My friend said to me that when paramedics came, they just treated me as if I was an irresponsible drunk person. And I think that made me even more scared to tell people how I felt or what had really happened to me. New figures from the National Police Chiefs Council show nearly 5,000 cases of spiking were reported to police in the last year. 59% of alleged incidents had taken place in pubs, bars and clubs, and 64% of those reported to police had happened on weekends. Yes. Here in Brighton, officers are now working with clubs and bars to try and identify victims of spiking. They say the way victims are targeted is changing. There is a preconception that spiking is always inserting something into a drink or lacing a drink with another alcohol. However, recently we've been seeing more as needle pricking via the arm, leg, um, those sort of methods. Sharon wants more protection for potential victims. I really want society to stop blaming victims. It's never their fault, you know, it's not what I'm wearing, it's not where I am, it's the perpetrator and the perpetrators only and that's what we really need to put focus on. Police are urging anyone who thinks they've been spiked to come forward and to be alert to the dangers in the run-up to New Year's Eve. Leila Hayes, ITV News. And that is all for now. I'm back with the late news just before half past ten. Until then, enjoy your evening. Bye-bye.